So again, thanks everybody for being here and welcome to May. We're excited that you're here again and we're looking forward to our discussion. And so that song was hopefully to inspire everybody about authentic leadership because it is hard trying to be a leader and feel like you're doing it on your own. And so I'm really, really excited to have the discussion um, with the fantastic panelists that we have today. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to James for um, bringing us in to today. James, you're muted. Good grief, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Shayla, once again. And hello everybody and welcome to May. We are so excited that you're here and are looking forward to this discussion, improved employee engagement through authentic leadership. We're so excited about our lineup of guest panelists and are thankful that they have taken their time to share their expertise and best practices with all of us. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, my name is James Whirlwind Soldier, and I'm the Northwest Workforce Strategy Consultant for the uh, Minnesota Department of Economic Development, uh, Employment and Economic Development, excuse me. Um, and we are happy to have you here with us today. Uh, if you're new here, thank you so much for joining us. And if you're not, thank you for coming back. Please take a second and introduce yourself in chat. We want to know who you are and what you do. Um, our team of consultants work regionally, which means that each consultant will have a slightly different way uh, that they do the work. Uh, based on the region that they're supporting. But the common core ways that we support our employers are identified here on this slide. We work with you to identify gaps in your current strategies and ensure that you are connected with your local regional and state workforce partners. We also assist you in building strategies that will help you attract and retain your workforce. Next slide, please. Our consultation process is rooted and informed by data and is developed specifically with your company's needs and goals in mind. We serve as your guide through this process and convene workforce partners for support. We share training grant opportunities and continually check in to ensure progress is being made, making adjustments along the way. When you work with us, you're automatically connected to a wide network of people and partners who work collaboratively, excuse me, collaboratively for the success of our state, our region, our, and our communities so that your business and our workforce can thrive. We absolutely don't do this work alone, and it takes many people to bring success to these efforts. Next slide, please. Uh, you'll see on this slide that we have our 2024 lineup available for registration. Uh, you spoke, we listened, we incorporated your feedback into these topics, and we'll continue to weave your needs into our sessions for the rest of the year, and including the next year. Uh, so if you're interested in learning about something that's not on the list, please put that into the evaluation. We would love to hear from you. Now, our session today will go uh, until about noon, after which we will segue into a 30 minute unplugged portion of the event. Uh, during that uh, time, we invite you to turn on your cameras, unmute yourself and ask questions directly to our panelists, as well as, as, well as our team of workforce strategy consultants. And of course, you can ask questions through chat at any time. We wanna hear from you. Um, I would also like to take a moment and encourage you to fill out that evaluation at the end of our time here together. Uh, we'll get that link popped up into the chat for you. As always, these webinars are recorded and available to view at any time on YouTube as well as CareerForceMN.com. Uh, there you will find recordings and resources from this session as well as previous sessions. And we will absolutely be utilizing our chat feature today, as we mentioned, uh, throughout our time together. So please ask questions um, and interact with our guests, the consultants, our partners, and each other. It's your engagement that makes us a community. So. Uh, we have a super packed agenda today with some amazing guests who have dedicated their careers to being change makers and culture shakers. So without further ado, it's my privilege to introduce you to our Northeast Workforce Strategy Consultant. You all know her, you all love her, Shayla Drake. Thank you, James. Um, so we are really excited to have you all join us today for our session on improved employee engagement through authentic leadership to hear from an incredibly talented group of industry professionals. So in today's competitive business landscape, enhancing employee engagement has become crucial for organizational success. Unlocking the power of authentic leadership can be the key to, achieve, to achieving this. Um, authentic leaders inspire trust, foster open communication, and create a work environment where employees feel valued and motivated. By embracing authenticity, organizations can unleash the full potential of their employees, driving motivation, productivity, and overall performance. Our agenda for today will consist of an overview of what authenticity 
authentic leadership is. And then we'll move into a discussion with our panelists on how the work that they are doing, that they exhibit authentic leadership and assist in developing others into authentic leaders. And then finally at noon, we'll start our unplug session where that's where James will be leading it. And then you can turn on your microphones and videos and then personally join us in the conversation. We'll be taking questions throughout the presentation. So to be sure to use the chat box feature, share your ideas and questions. So what is authentic leadership anyway? Authentic leadership is characterized by self-awareness, transparency, and a genuine desire to connect with and empower others. It involves displaying a consistent and congruent leadership style that aligns with personal values. Authentic leaders prioritize building meaningful relationships, promoting ethical behavior, and inspiring others to reach their full potential. Adopting authentic leadership principles can create a positive and engaged work culture, leading to increased employee satisfaction, loyalty, and productivity. And so you can see by this graphic, it's a you, me, and we mentality. So what is the, like the overall importance of all of this, right? So in today's competitive business landscape, Enhancing employee engagement has become crucial for organizational success. Unlocking the power of authentic leadership can be the key to achieving this. Authentic leaders inspire, trust, foster open communication, and create a work environment where employees feel valued and motivated. By embracing, uh, embracing authenticity, organizations can unleash the full potential of employees, thus driving innovation, productivity, and overall performance. So there's a strong correlation between authentic leadership and employee engagement. When leaders are authentic, employees feel more connected and motivated. Um, authentic leaders create a sense of trust, encourage open communication, and provide meaningful feedback. This fosters a positive work environment where employees feel valued and motivated to contribute their best work again, leading to higher levels of engagement and overall satisfaction. This seems very repetitive, but it just seems to be what is. To further enhance employee engagement, supporting the development and or possessing four key qualities in leadership, transparency, empathy, humility, and integrity is pretty much the qualities necessary, right? It's like, that's the secret sauce. Transparent leaders foster trust by being open and honest, while empathetic leaders understand and support their employees' needs. Humble leaders recognize the value of their team and give credit where credit is due. And finally, leaders with integrity consistently act ethically and inspire their employees to do the same, creating a culture of trust and commitment. It's not like, do as I say, not as I do. Effective communication is a crucial aspect of authentic leadership. Leaders should actively listen and encourage open dialogue to foster trust and collaboration. They should also communicate their vision and goals clearly, providing guidance and feedback to their team. By practicing transparent and empathetic communication, authentic leaders can create a positive work environment that promotes engagement and high performance. And building trust, building trust and rapport is a fundamental aspect of authentic leadership. Leaders should demonstrate integrity and transparency and open mindedness to establish trust with their employees. They should also invest time in building strong relationships, actively listening to their team's concerns and providing support. By fostering a trusting and supportive environment, leaders can enhance employee engagement and create a cohesive and successful team. So now that we've like kind of gone through, you know, authentic leadership as kind of what it is and, you know, what it means and kind of some strategies, I'm excited to kind of talk to our panel who's doing the thing, right? Like we talked about the thing. Let's talk about the people doing the thing, right? So now we're going to move into our panel discussion. So I'm really excited to introduce our panelists today. Um, we have Kelly Hurling. Kelly uh, is 
um, HR supervisor and senior manager with LM Radiator Inc., a Wabtec company. And I, sorry if I pronounced it wrong, I've heard it called Wabtec and Webtech, so I'm not sure which way to pronounce that. Um, she has been working in leadership roles for over 20 years. The past nine years, um, she has spent at LM Radiator building their um, department, HR department, enhancing their brand to become an employer of choice on the Iron Range. Um, Kelly has current Kelly currently serves on the True North Stars um, Perkins Consortium on the True North Stars and AHR, AHRA board. And previously she served on the Workforce Development Board, IASC Next Manufacturing Advisory Board, and the Assumption Catholic Schools Advisory Board. She is a connector by nature and has a love for people. Through piloting new programs and partnering with area schools and developing international apprenticeship programs, Kelly empowers others to see the value of themselves. She gives them strengths and encouragement to grow while believing in the power of kindness, honesty, and transparent communication that builds trust and everlasting relationships. Then we have Samara Lowney. Um, Tamara is a rural Minnesota native and brings over two decades of diverse leadership experience, initially with Armark across U.S. and internationally, including major events like the Beijing and London Olympics. And returning to her roots in 2013, she earned a bachelor's in business administration, dedicating herself to rural economic development. As a president of the Itasca Economic Development Corporation since 2019, um, her innovation of innovative approach has earned her the 2020 Edom Innovation Award. Um, under her guidance, the team has grown, quadrupling support for the local businesses in the area. She has spearheaded projects like the Forge, creating, getting the Forge created, which is a um, incubator and makers space um, in the Iron Range, securing $2.5 million in grants for a dynamic community space. Um, committed to continuous growth, she has earned her MBA in 2023 and serves on the Energy Transition Advisory Committee. Tamara resides in Grand Rapids with her family, deeply invested in their vibrant small town community. Claire Peterlin is an Iron Ranger, born in Ealing, Minnesota, and raised in Virginia, now resides outside of Grand Rapids and has developed a deep loyalty to serving Northeastern Minnesota. No matter her role, Claire is a chemical engineer by trade with a bachelor's of science from Minnesota State University, Mankato, and a master's in engineering from the University of Minnesota Duluth. She will finish her MBA in leadership and change from the College of St. Scholastica this spring. Claire is proud to say that she has worked as an engineer in three of the major industries in the region, including power generation, paper, and mining. However, the steel industry's downturn in 2016 led her to pivot towards education and workforce development, where she spent six years designing career pathways and fostering business education collaboration across the region to create opportunities for students to explore in-demand careers and have work-based learning experiences. After building Itasca's Area School's Next Career Pathways program, Claire spent time as Regional Development Representative with Minnesota Power as a Manager of Strategic Partnerships and Ecosystem, ecosystem Development for the Plum Catalyst, an Emerging Transportation Technology and Accessibility Strategy Consulting Firm. Presently, she directs Aspire North, Minnesota North College's Equity and Workforce Initiative. Beyond work, Claire enjoys reading, outdoor activities like fishing, gardening, and spending quality time with her husband, two dogs, and family. So with that, going to stop sharing. We are going to get to conversation. So going. I can't see anybody, so give me just one second here. There you are. I found you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm working on a small laptop today. Perfect. So the first question that I think I want to ask, well, first of all, thank you all for being here. I'm so excited that you all are here because um, I think that um, I'm really, really grateful that you all are here because um, you are leaders. Um, at least I know in the areas that I've been around and um, are very humble in your leadership um, that I have seen in this one thing. Um, so what the first thing that I would like to ask probably of um, all of you is what specific strategies or practices have you seen in implementation that have been proven to improve employee engagement 
So I think we'll start with um, Claire and then move to um, Kelly and then Tamara. So maybe specific strategies or practices that you have noticed that have um, been proven to improve engagement. Sure, thanks Shayla. Hi everyone. Uh, I feel really honored to be asked to be on this panel and especially with the context and um, that's been given already. So thank you for asking me to participate in this. Um, the questions that Shayla prepped us with like really caused me to think really hard and reflect about my own leadership style and I'll apologize in advance if it sounds like I speak in bumper sticker at times because those are my like lighthouses or whatever you want to call them when I'm in really challenging times as a leader is just those things that come to mind so feel free to steal them from me I'm sure I've stolen them from people that have been on my path along the way too. Um, so when I was thinking about specific strategies that I've seen implemented that have been proven to improve employee engagement, um, I would just like to start off with communication. Um, communicate, communicate, communicate. Of course, um, you know, there's a limit sometimes with transparency and vulnerability, especially with you're in when you're in leadership and management roles. Um, but one of my favorite sayings is that people support what they help build. Um, and I've been a part of a lot of really great initiatives from the ground up. Um, and as a leader, I know that one of my greatest assets is the power to convene and bring people together. And um, and it's it's in my it's one of my first instincts to try to get everyone that I can related to the project in the room and um, at the same starting point and communicate with them what we're doing, why we're doing it, um, ask questions, get feedback. So I'll start there and and let the other two take it. Perfect. Kelly? Thanks, oh, sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Good job, you, Claire. you were on it. You were on it. You go right ahead. Yeah, I was on it. That's good. Well, also want to thank um, Shayla for, for the ask to be here today. Um, being an authentic leader is, I think, something that you don't choose to do. You just are. Um, so I am very appreciative to be here. Very honored. Um, I think when it comes to just specific strategies or practices, um, these questions were really hard and, and they were good reflections for, for me. Um, Cause when I think about that, you know, when you think about that as an individual is one thing, but when you think of that as a whole organization, that's a really bigger um, scope. So just, um, I, I'm gonna bring it down to just my level and, and what I've done to implement in my department and then my departments, and then because Wabtech um, has acquired us, <laughs> um, how have we done that integration? Because I think this is where the authentic leadership has really proven its its value to me as a leader, and then maybe as an example to some other leaders in our senior management team, because without that communication, as Claire put, um, you can't really ignite your initiatives. And when you go from a privately held company to a publicly held company, that's that's a really big shift and a really large change. So you really have to hold on to that that authenticity that you own personally. Um, so some of the things that we implemented as far as like strategies are things that we kind of do daily. It's small meetings, learning who your new team is, um, touch bases every week, setting agendas, you know, um, not forgetting that personal touch. Who are you? What do you do personally? Where do you come from? Um, so internal department meetings, because now I look at the group, I don't know those HR um, individuals as well as I do those sitting across the hall from me. So it's share a baby picture. Tell me about a hobby, you know, and just kind of start out meetings softly so you get to know those individuals, you know, externally and then as they are internally. Because one of the things I like to tell people is there's no such thing as leaving your personal life at the door. We hire people as as a whole being and, and you get to come to work as yourself, as your whole being. And when we remember that, I think then you hire the right person and you put the right person in the right seat. So those are some of the strategies we use or that I personally use is setting small meetings, making sure that we're on the same page, get to know your employees up front right away. 
um, because when you understand who they are as an individual, you can help them grow and foster them internally as well. So I will pass that off to Pamela. <laughs> Well, that is great. I I think again, you know, echoing Claire and Kelly, just an honor to be here. Um, I and I think, you know, building off of what Kelly was saying, I think part of that equation is vulnerability, and it's something you don't see written out because most of us think that communication and getting to know our people is essentially like a one-way street. Like I'm here for you. I I hear you. I listen to your challenges. But what takes you to that next level with your team is being open and honest about your own vulnerabilities. And so I think it's really important when we talk about organizations that say we have a, a family-like environment here, but that family environment is really one way. Like your employers are sharing they employees are sharing their challenges with you, but they don't really understand you as a leader, what your challenges might be. And that is a really big ask for most people, right? It's a big ask to put it out there that, you know, this is happening in my personal life right now. And you know, how much of that of your inner layers do you expose? You know, we all look at ourselves as onions and we have various layers that we can share. But I'm telling you that in my experience across the US and abroad, that level of vulnerability always leads to deeper relationships, which leads to trust and leads to open communication within a team. And so it is it is communication, it is thinking about getting to know our people, but it's also being vulnerable enough with our own uh, personal lives, our own story that we can connect in a, in a more meaningful way. And I think one thing I just like to add, you know, when I when I worked abroad and I worked with a lot of international folks, it was always really critical for me when I went into a new setting to do research and understand the culture and and try to have some insights before I even brought myself into that place. And that's one of the things and values that I brought back to my home here in Minnesota is that if we start looking at our own communities as having independent cultures and trying to understand our employee base, what their cultural values are, they're not always exactly the same as our own. And especially as we welcome more diversity into our workforce, it means so much to individual cultures. And I'm not saying it has to be someone from a different country. It could be from someone from a different part of Minnesota that has a different tradition that they value. Taking the time and investing and in understanding who works for you, even without them telling you, and being able to say, hey, Shayla, I, you know, I know where you come from. You celebrate this and I'm excited to celebrate with you today. And what kind of things do you do at home about this? It really shows that you have an interest beyond just what they're telling you and going out and gathering that information on your own. So again, do a little research, spend a little time getting to know who your people are and then be prepared and willing to be vulnerable in that relationship. That's fantastic. So like, Coming off of that a little bit, um, I'll I'll start with you tomorrow, and then um, Kelly. Can you, that was kind of already some specific examples. So can you share some specific examples from your experiences where some of those authentic leadership pieces positively impacted employee engagement within your organizations? You know, it's happening right now in our organization, and I'm just sure this is across the state of Minnesota, but the child care shortage, I have a, a small team here. Um, we have eight people that are in this office, and more than half of us have child uh, children, all, you know, various ages from babies all the way up to high school. And the child care issue is real time in our workplace. And so we just today talked openly and candidly about some of the things we're going to all be experiencing because of the schools letting out a little early this year, because we've got some issues with child care for infants. How can we help our employees overcome those challenges? And I know it's different for everyone. Not everyone can respond in the way that we are here. But first of all, we're giving our, our folks an opportunity to share that deep level of almost fear and challenge they have that somehow mm -hmm. as an employer, I'm going to you know have an issue if they can't find childcare for an afternoon or they have to leave early because their, um, their childcare doesn't open on Fridays anymore for the whole summer, they're just being notified. So these are real time challenges. And if you think about the person and how much fear and burden they're holding on to because they're so nervous about what we as their employer are going to do about that, right? How are they going to respond to this very personal childcare issue that I'm having? And so just allowing and having those open conversations with your staff about, 
How is who is this impacting? How is it impacting you? What can we be doing about this? And I think especially in organizations that are very heavily male, where people think, well, you know, the child care challenge often falls on the woman. And so this maybe isn't as big of a, a challenge for our organization. It's a big assumption. And I think it's really not valid in today's world. You have to assume that both caregivers are a part of the equation in today's world and that you need to be asking that question of every worker and really opening it up to you, the community of workforce you have to think about how can we really think about child care for our workforce? That's, that's awesome. I'm going to piggyback off of what Tamara said um, because I, I currently heavily oversee a couple, you know, our, our different sites, but I'm going to flip it to recruiting. So when you feel that impact of being short staffed, don't have childcare, that impacts from an industry standpoint, what pr kind of product you can get out the door. And um, so when it comes to HR and our recruiting, you, we have to think strategically. And so I really try to listen hard to my employees on where do you find the best workers and you know listen to the di different generations. Where are we looking? What are they looking for? How do we advertise? What are we giving our employees that they benefit from, you know, why should they work for us and then tailor our ads and different things so that they understand what we're able to provide. And when employees see that, when they bring suggestions to us on how to maybe advertise or where different groups of people are, um, they feel like you're listening. Like we can't do it alone, especially like our supervisors. I mean, we're finding people to help fill their roles and their positions. So when they bring suggestions to you and they're doable, I mean, you can't do every suggestion. You can't possibly take on all the things, but if you can implement one or two things that make sense, um, I mean, that really goes a long way. And we've done a few of those things where maybe, you know, somebody said, well, people don't, they don't want to fill out a, a a 20 question application or people aren't looking in the newspaper. Have you thought about advertising, you know, to this group or that group? And, you know, it's just that out of the box thinking and being willing to change. You know, we don't always, we're not always the experts and in, in knowing that and being willing to um, listen and, and have somebody else maybe be the expert for you. You don't always have to know all the things, right? Surround yourself with other people that might know more than you. Um, the people on the floor know a lot. So if you spend any amount of time with them, you're going to get a lot of answers to the questions you might have. So it's spending time with your people, and that really helps increase that engagement piece, I believe. Perfect. And so, you know, you, you can see, I mean, or at least I can see, you know, the positives and in, in, in all of those things, but it seems like it's a lot of work, right? And and so, <laughs> so I mean, I'll start this question. I'll go, I'll go, Claire, and then Tamara, and and then Kelly. But you know, what challenges have you faced or observed in trying to foster authentic leadership within a team or organization? It is really hard work. <laughs> um, and Kelly said something in the first question about how like being an authentic leader isn't something that you choose to do. It's it's just how you do the work and, um, and it's about who you are. And I also believe that, you know, leadership is more of a characteristic than it is a job title. Um, it's a practice and it's a continuum. Um, so challenges for fostering um, authentic leadership is that being authentic also means having hard conversations and they're hard conversations for a reason. They're not always fun. Um, and so I, that's something that I personally struggle with. I love to be the bearer of good news <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I'm a people pleaser to a fault. Um, so when things are hard, when there's challenges and when there's problems that you have to work through, those aren't always fun conversations to have, but you get better at them over time. And I would say also to kind of emphasize um, tomorrow's point of vulnerability as a leader, like those hard conversations are opportunities for you to say, like, I don't have all the answers. I need your help. Um, and so 
you know, walking into a conversation again to what Kelly said and just being like, I don't know everything. Um, and I believe that those closest to the work have a lot of the answers and I'm here to listen and model humble leadership. That's a good place to start. I, I'll, I'll agree with it because like I'm more likely to trust somebody that says that they don't have the answer, all the answers than to somebody that says I have all the answers to everything. I am more likely to per trust the person that doesn't have all of the answers to everything because how do you have all of the answers to all of the questions? <laughs> so absolutely. Kelly. Well, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Tomorrow, Yeah, tomorrow you are next. I apologize. <laughs> I keep jumping in there because I'm so excited about the conversation. Yeah. It's it's really fun. I think, you know, when you think about challenges for me, the biggest one is almost always time because I think all of us have this real desire to be there for our people. You know, authentic leaders, they want to have this these intimate conversations. They want to be able to address um, real challenges within their teams. And I think what it comes down to, and this is certainly not the work-life balance answer, so just take that with a grain of salt. But um, as a leader, I, I block time almost every day that I know is just time that I'm going to spend with my team. And it's very, it's not, I'm not planning to go talk to Dan and consulting. You know, I I have time that's available that people know I'm available. They can come and talk to me. I will take that time just to spend a few extra minutes with them. Um, but having unscheduled, unfettered time available for yourself as a leader to engage is important. And I get it. It often means that that means you're working on some of those extra things in the evenings. We, we often are all doing that. But if you don't block that time on your calendar and like, make that known, this is my time, I'm going to engage, then you won't have the time to do that level of, of real, like, I want to be there for my folks. And I think part of it too is um, we often as leaders, we're, we're just inundating ourselves, we're planning out, we're scheduling our days. Take the time to say, I'm going to for sure every, you know, every Tuesday or every couple of days a week, I'm going to have lunch in the break room with my people. I'm not going to sit at my desk and eat while I'm working. <clears throat> Because that's the only time I have left to get any, you know, catch up on my emails. It's intentionally making time to be out there on the line, in the, you know, in the break rooms where people are gathering and sitting down, being comfortable, being uncomfortable, right? Like I'm that manager that's going to walk into the break room and sit in the middle of a big table and, you know, join in a conversation and be really willing to be uncomfortable for a little while until people get used to seeing me do that. Um, but again, it's about breaking down those those barriers that I'm not approachable or they can't talk to me about these challenges. So really schedule that time, make time uh, to be out there with your workforce. You two are tough to follow. <laughs> um, but I'm going to add to that because that's it's very, very true. I think there's a lot of challenges and a couple of the things that I would say is the things that I, some of the biggest things that I find holding that are my challenges is I'm I'm a very honest person and I want, I really do rather know the truth about something than somebody kind of lie through it because when you know the truth, you can work through it and you can find the right solutions. And so whether it's with my team or within the organization, I might not like the honest answer but we can always find the solution and work together um, to get there. So I think if I sh always show that I am being honest within my responses, um, you know, you got to lead that if you expect that you need to be that. And so I guess sometimes my challenge is because I am, I have to remember that people are not always going to like my answer either. And I'm very tender. So. How do I deliver that message? Understanding my audience who is listening, making sure that I'm delivering that message in which they're going to understand and hear me so that the receiver on that end is understanding it in the language they know. Um, because I think sometimes in my world, I have to tell people a lot of hard things, whether they don't get the job, why they don't get the job, they don't get promoted, why they didn't get promoted and why. And so sometimes I think that how we deliver that message, whether it's soft or if we have to be a little firm, it all depends on who's receiving that message. 
And then also upholding your integrity. I think that is another big challenge we have because whether we like it or not, there's a lot of politics that happen in organizations. And I don't know about you, but I don't have time. It's about getting the work done. And I, I don't want to play any games. I am about really coming to work, doing an honest day's job, helping people rise to where they want to go, doing the work to get it done, and, and just really being a catalyst for them to help them in their career paths. And so sometimes we have to fight against that and being an authentic leader. Wow, that can be really hard sometimes. So I think that is some of my biggest challenges that I have faced. And I think others probably face that too. And sometimes you just end up giving in and it's just that fight to not, not cave or not give in or not just even being a passive bystander just to even maybe not say anything, but because you're part of a conversation, they think you agree. So those are some of the biggest challenges that I've observed, I've faced. And, um, you know, I think if I can leave with any piece of advice would be to just hold on to that, fight for it, because it's worth it. So I've heard this a couple of times already kind of pop up about you know, being a, a leader, or at least an authentic leader is kind of something you just kind of are, right? So I'm going to ask this one kind of to the group then and just see who kind of wants to answer this question. If someone has an answer to this question, if not, we can just say not it, no, you know, name those goes. But for, in, for individuals who currently do not embody authentic leadership, maybe what steps, maybe, maybe they would like to and maybe looking at some of the slides, they're like, maybe I, I don't have some of these qualities, but I would like to maybe embody some of these qualities. What steps can they take to maybe develop or foster some of those authentic leadership qualities? So I'm going to let this one be a free for all. So whoever would like to take that one. I can jump in first on this yeah. one. <clears throat> um, I think if you're in a position, maybe you're in this room, I guess you'd have to be in this room to be thinking about this. But um, if you're asking yourself like, hey, I want to be more of an authentic leader, like you're already taking the first step down that path. Um, and there's like the paradox of transformation is that as soon as you let go of this idea of transforming and like, like accept yourself for where you're at and your limitations and your gaps, that's when you can start making changes. Um, so just saying like, being in a place of self-acceptance and self-awareness and saying, hey, I need to work on something and I'm willing to put in that work to get to where I want to be is a huge step and the first step that you need to take. And it is a constant practice and a constant continuum. Um, and I also think there's a paradox around self-development that like the more you work on yourself, the more you realize that you have more to work on. <laughs> um, so like the work is never done. Um, so that being said, just that recognition is the first step that comes to mind for me. And then from there, I would say, like, look around your circle and your network and find people that inspire you, that you want to be like and start observing them and how they act. Take notes, um, maybe have a coffee conversation with them, ask them about their leadership principles and styles, um, have a learner's heart and, and an open and open mind and curiosity um, about people around you and the leader that you think you want to be. And then I would say also ask for feedback so you can identify your gaps. Um, you know, you can become self-aware or be self-aware to a certain extent, but you also have a reputation and a perception with those that you work with. And so find some trusted people and ask for feedback. Tell them like, hey, I want to level up my leadership style and I'm, I'd am i really love some honest feedback from you on things that you think I could work on. Um, and that's what I would say to start with. And if I could add to Claire's um, comments to take it another step further, something that I have done personally and something that I do have recommended to others is if that person is willing to be your mentor, um, there's having a mentor in leadership is really amazing and it can be a really transformational process. Um, sometimes we all need that person. and. Um, it can be really inspiring. So maybe just to add to what Claire said, find your mentor that you want to emulate <laughs> and uh, see where it goes. 
Well, and I think about it really from the other perspective too. So let's say you're a leader and you have a team of folks and at least half of those folks you think, gosh, they've they've got potential. They've got a lot of the skill sets that are needed to be our next supervisor, our next assistant manager. Um, and but they they really need some some coaching in different areas. But maybe that person doesn't think that they need that training, right? So I feel like we um, we have a lot of opportunity, especially as we think at uh, look at the the panel of folks that are working for us. We really want to surround our, ourselves with people that have different strengths, right? So we, when we have a team, we want to make sure that we're hitting these key components. We're trying to build a team that's going to be a rock star team. But we know within those ranks, we won't always have people at the right, exactly where we want them to be with authentic leadership, right? I have that. I think we'd all do, right? So I think it's it's about really having candid coaching conversations with your leadership team and talking very openly about where they see areas of growth and where you see areas of growth. So I think this comes back to those hard conversations that Claire was alluding to, right? And and Kelly as well. Like when we think about our future. There's going to be a lot of people out there. <clears throat> they think they're there already, right? Here I am. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to be the next manager. <laughs> I, I can check every box. I know how this operation runs. I know what I need to do. I know how to write a schedule. I'm your person. And if you know that whole time that your person isn't quite there and they're not going to get there without guidance, you need to start today. Not when they're asking for that promotion or they're applying for that next job. If you see someone that you see wants to grow, they want to be a manager, don't let them continue on a path where they're not growing in the areas that you know they need growth in. Take the time when you're doing those evaluations and do them, A, do them more frequently. Make sure you're doing them quarterly. Give them goals, short-term and long-term things to work on. And then give them real-time opportunities to expose them to the type of growth you're looking for, right? So don't just say, hey, go take this class on how to you know, run a spreadsheet or run this part of the line. Think about the piece of authentic leadership that they're missing and really do some work to find out where they can get the experience and exposure to become better. And I love that with Kelly. I was going to say mentorship as well. It often is mentors. Maybe you have another supervisor that really has the skill you wish they had, and that might make them the next best candidate for a supervisor or manager position. But if you're not grooming your team for the next managers and supervisors, you're really missing a big opportunity. If you're just sitting back and waiting for that person to float in and with this great application, man, think about the trust and the love you gain within your workforce and team by investing that extra time in there before you need them to be a manager. So they're ready to be the next best manager you have. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's say, Let's say that you you've been working on on stuff like that, right? You're working on trying to do mentorship programs to develop those next leaders. Um, and you know, you you how do you measure success of authentic leadership maybe um in your organization? You know, how 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 do you measure the efficacy, you know, of of <laughs> authentic leadership? um in your organization so let's say you know we're you know we had these kind of leaders before and now we're starting to implement some of these key elements of you know authentic leadership and we're starting some leadership training and we're really you know trying to to hone in on on what we got how do you measure that success or you know do do you with your employee engagement and and those kind of things I guess I can I can start here. I'll start I with Kelly and Tamara. Sorry, I, I did laugh a little bit when you said that. How do you measure um, someone's authentic leadership? That's quite the crux. I think that would be that would be challenging to do. I mean, I feel like the easiest measurement is to talk to the people that are working with that individual, right? And and really gauge how they're interacting with others and their growth. But you know, I think when you think about um, how someone's growing within an organization, you do have both tangible and intangible goals, right? You have things that are very measurable. Um, are they are they attending these trainings? Have they gone through a DEI training? Um, and did they, you know, check that box? Well, great, they they finished that. But what was what is the outcome of that training? What what did you gain from 
um, going through that best practice that we wanted you to go through. Because I think this is a sort of a standard challenge, right? We all have a box we need to check on various types of training for our teams, but it doesn't necessarily mean they took back this authentic way to approach this challenge. And DEI is a really easy one to identify because most organizations today have this DEI goal. You're gonna attend this training, you're gonna do this with your workforce, and but what does that really mean? And so I would say, you know, to answer your question with a question is I think this is a, a challenge for most organizations to identify how to measure real authentic growth versus just checking that box. So I didn't really answer your question, but I do think it, it is a big challenge. Well, and I'm glad you had to go first. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you, Tamara, for that. But I, I can, because um, the question is about I think what it was was enhancing employee engagement. How do you measure that, right? So one, I think one of the obvious answers is kind of your employee retention, but also mm -hmm. how do your employees engage with your management, your your current leadership? We do a lot of Gemba walks on the shop floor. How are they engaging observation? I attend a lot of supervisor and manager trainings just to observe who's who's engaging. Who's raising their hand? Who's volunteering? Who's asking questions? And you can really see that when I'm conducting training, I can look out there and, and see who's truly engaged in the training. Are they looking down? Are they falling asleep? Maybe I'm boring, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty colorful sometimes. So, you know, I just think that I think you can really get a sense of that. And when you know your people, if you spend enough time with them, I think. Also asking your supervisors, your managers, having that engagement. They also know, you know, that engagement piece. We also do surveys, you know, are they willing to take the survey? You know, your employees, again, are your, they're your biggest investment, right? So talk to them. What are they not getting? Because for us, um, we actually, that's how, if they're not getting something, they're going to tell you. And why? What can we do to improve? So we're constantly looking for that continuous improvement piece. Um, we we have these little surface things, um, and we use anonymous surveys all the time. And it takes us literally three minutes to do an eight to ten question survey. And our employees are so excited to do them because one, they're easy and they're fast. They're anonymous. And we give them feedback on what happens with those surveys. And whether we take the um, suggestion or not, they know why. Um, so, and candy, you know, we give them candy too. So that helps a little bit. But I think just, you know, those kind of pieces. And then the biggest thing again is is retention, you know, um, for us. And, and what does your turnover look like? Um, it, the real turnover, not the retirements, you know, things like that. But what's the real turnover look like? So that's, I guess, to answer the question, how do we measure? Those are just some of the few ways that we try to get some kind of measurement or analysis on our internal people. Yeah, I'll, so, um, oh, I was just gonna like, like emphasize what Kelly said, like what came to me, what came to mind for me was like, um, like an observation of the organization and whether I noticed that individuals are willing to give input and feedback freely, take risks, um, be vulnerable. I also think like a gut check with yourself. Um, I know like for me personally, like if I'm going through something or if I need help with a situation, like I have a number of people in management that I could go to, but all of us have been in that experience of like, I'm going to go to that person because I know that they'll hold me whole as a person and I can trust them with what I'm going to say. Um, and, you know, they'll help me out versus going to someone else. So a lot of this is like qualitative. Um, and then I would also say just like the engagement piece to um, there's been a number of organizations that I've been in where I've done feedback solicitation or um, surveys. And if you get crickets, um, I my like I don't point fingers at the person, I point fingers at the organization of like, what is the history around this organization and the trust that employees have that their feedback that's being given in this survey is going to be used? Um, because to Kelly's point, I bet her employees love completing those surveys because they know if they give that feedback, they're gonna see action taken on it and they're gonna be taken seriously. I'm also gonna put a plug in 
for a really excellent book called Lead Below the Surface by Latanya Wilkins, and I can put it in the chat, but she has a really great audit for authentic leadership that she calls REAL Leadership, so it's an acronym, and it stands for um, Are You Relatable? Are You Equitable? Are You Accessible? And Are You Loyal? And there's a set of questions within each of those that you can kind of do a quick check. It takes a couple minutes. You know, how how much have I shared about my personal life and like how my kids or my dog is with my employees? Am I relatable, um, equitable? Do I offer the same, you know, do I offer resources to everyone or, or try to understand what extra help people might need? Accessible to tomorrow's point, do I have time in my calendar where people can come to me? Um, and and know that my door is open and that I'm here for them and then loyal like how well do my employees know that if they make a mistake that I'm still at their side that I have their back and so it, um, I'll put that resource in there because it's really helped me just kind of quickly be like okay what do I what do I need to work on in this situation that is fantastic and I think you might have just maybe answered the question the last question that I'm going to ask you <laughs> Because <laughs> I was going to say, what is one key takeaway do you want to make sure employers receive from today's session? Because that is a good one, Claire. I like that. That's fantastic. But I'm going to say, um, Kelly, Claire, and Tamara, what is one key takeaway you want to make sure employers receive from today's session? And we're going to answer these, and then we're going to pop over um, for a quick transition, and then we're going to do our 30-minute unplugged. So... Um, we'll start um, with, um, for the one key takeaway, we'll go, um, uh, Claire, we'll just go ahead and start with you, and then we'll go Kelly, and then tomorrow. Um, so I kind of answered, or I know. <laughs> this answer in a couple other places. Um, I would just say, like, I'll go back to an answer that I had prepared for something else, is that like we are in times of increasing complexity and uncertainty and emergence. Um, resources are limited, you know, as far as people, money, um, we the need to collaborate and take down boundaries across organizations or across, you know, political sides, et cetera, is increasing in order to solve problems. Um, and because of that, old paradigms around leadership kind of need to be dismantled. And so we need to be curious about new models of leadership. Um, you know, we don't we don't have the answers, but just be willing to experiment. Um, and then I think my last bumper sticker was how you do anything is how you do everything. So, um, you know, when you're thinking about being an authentic leader, like it's OK to take a pause and lead with integrity. And um, and just remember that, like, if you put that forward, you can't go wrong. I think authentic leaders think a lot alike. <laughs> so um, I think anything anybody says today is 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 good advice. Uh, key takeaway, um, I could mimic everything that Claire said. To add to that, have grace because we are in a time of change. Be willing and open. And in the end, always stay true to yourself and your values, um, especially because that's the one true thing that stays the same. I really, I was, I was excited to go last initially, and now I'm like, gosh, I have to follow those guys. Um, but I think, you know, it is, it's a really, a really important place to be because if you think about, um, what people aspire to do today like why are they coming to work for you um absolutely the wages matter absolutely benefits matter um but more often than not people are joining and leaving organizations because of how they're being managed and how they're being led and so if you think about an authentic leader for me that an authentic leader represents the entire organization and it's a heavy weight to bear and so i think one of the things that i'd really like you to take away today is as you think about what the definition of authentic leadership is go back to your own organization and think do we have authentic leaders and don't wait to either address those that aren't authentic leaders and look at opportunities for their growth or look at opportunities for change because there is absolutely 
a, a direct line between retention, um, efficiencies within your workplace, the, the outcomes you're looking for are tied to leadership without a doubt. So don't um, don't sit back and wait for change to happen because it's already here. And you really need to be thinking about what that means in your organization today um, and how you're going to lead that into the future. Perfect. Absolutely. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to James. This has been a fantastic first part of the session to take us out for the unplug. All right. Thank you very much. This was really great. I can't wait to ask you more questions about uh, what, uh, these, these things you're talking about. So, but before we get there, I just want to let everybody know we're doing Workforce Wednesday again next month, like we do every month. And please join us then June for our next Workforce Wednesday webinar. That'll be on June 5th for Fair Chance 101, how to recruit and retain a justice-involved workforce. Our panel will consist of employers who are doing this good work, workforce developers who create that kind of that bridge between the employers and the talent. Um, and we also hope to have uh, an actual second chance or join us who can talk about their experiences in, uh, experiences navigating the workforce system, but also navigating that contemporary recruiting and hiring funnel. Um, so again, please join us Wednesday, June 5th. We are, uh, we are having some issues with our registration right now for this particular event, but we're working with Minnesota IT and we hope to have that resolved uh, very quickly today. So uh, and until then, please visit careerforcemn.com where you can check out our upcoming session topics. You can check out resources, our blogs, and find ways to engage with your regional strategy consultants. You can also sign up to receive our emails there for reminders about these events, our newsletter, again, those blogs and other information about what our team is up to. All right, Jaylee, you can go to number. Thank you very much. And then just uh, as, an, as an aside, we want to bring this up um, for all the employers on the call today. If you don't already work with Career Force, uh, Minnesota's Network of American Job Centers, we encourage you to register for the upcoming Career Force and More uh, for Employers series that's uh, during May here. Full information and registration links can be found on the website you see on the slide, and we'll make sure and throw that into the chat. Uh, the first session actually starts tomorrow, May 2nd at 1130 a.m. Uh, CareerForce is a, is a program that offers a lot of different uh, exciting resources, and so I very much advise anybody who's interested to check that out. Thanks, Shayla. Oh. I apologize. Um, again, we would like to thank you uh, all for joining us for this main session. We would love for you to stick around for our unplug session immediately following this one, where you can unmute yourselves and turn your cameras on uh, if you'd like to directly ask questions of our panelists. Uh, so please take a moment to complete today's survey. Um, for everyone who's registered, we will also be sending out the recording and resources from today's session. And as always, please feel free to reach out to any one of the workforce strategy consultants uh, especially that one that's assigned to your region. If you need and now we'll move on to unplugged. This is awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. I guess we can just